When you come to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. The quitter will never take you down the road you want to travel. I believe we all have a winner in us. There is a winner inside of you. Sometimes we just have been around negativity for way too long. Develop the mindset of a winner. The truth is, most people give up on their dream. Most people give up on their dream to live the average lifestyle. But it really doesn't matter what most people do. What do you do? Because you are different. You will never give up on your dream. You will never not listen to the average. You will always listen to the winner in you. You will believe in yourself when no one else does. You will believe in yourself when you have no reason to believe. And you will never, ever quit. I know some of you are going through a rough time right now. Some of you are going through the fight of your life. Fighting for your future, fighting for your career, fighting for your family. Some of you are fighting for your life. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Do not give in. I know life can be tough. I know life can wear you down. But if you just stick it out, even if you don't get the result you will find, the character you show will be your reward. The fighting spirit you develop will be the reward. And it will serve you well for the rest of your life. Fight for what you want now or fight against what you don't want later. You choose. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare settle. Don't you dare get back down. Not today or any other day. When the tough moments come, never forget you are in that moment writing your own legacy. In that tough moment, you are setting the standard for your character. Do you have the character? Well, do you? When you come up to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. When you make a commitment to yourself, you make sure you see it through. Never, ever quit. Even if you don't get the result, you will find the character you show will be your reward. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare ever settle. And don't you dare ever back down. Fight for what you want or fight against what you don't want at a later time. And always know that God is right there with you. Just allow God to guide and direct you. And you will always be a winner. Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an author, an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, The Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can also see a video version if you go to YouTube, go to the search bar, and hit Take Your Life Back Today show or Ralph Friedrichs's. Great marriages take work, my friends. Here are three powerful truths to help your marriage this morning. You know the saying, marriages are made in heaven, but they sure take a lot of maintenance on earth, don't they? Well, friends, that is the truth. Great marriages take work, and it's worth the work. You just need to put the time and the effort into it. Many times people go from relationship to another seeking the perfect relationship. They can't seem to maintain relationships bailing out whenever conflict happens. Later, learning there is no perfect relationship here on earth except for if you have one with God. There is no such thing as perfect marriage. Relationships and marriage are high maintenance. If you want good, healthy relationships in your life, you need to be willing to work at it. You need the wisdom of God each and every day, and you need to understand the dynamics of relationships. In Psalms 34, 12 through 14 is a scripture that sums up in a nutshell what it takes to have fulfilling relationships and good marriage. It says, whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There are three powerful truths in this verse that when applied will greatly aid you and the success of fulfilling a happy marriage. They are control your tongue. Do good to each other. Seek peace and pursue it. Why is it important for us to work in our marriage? Well, like anything in life, to succeed in it. Because God designed us for relationships. The most important thing in your life besides your relationship with God are people in your life friends not uh, it's not your job or your money or your hobbies and if you're married it's your spouse 
You can have everything, but if you lack a good relationship, you're unfulfilled and empty. On the other hand, you can have very little, but if you have friends and fulfilling relationships, you are rich in life. It's sad to say, but many people only know what it's like to have dysfunctional relationships. There are so many homes that are full of strive and marriages, not at peace. That's not God's best for your marriage. God wants you to enjoy your spouse. I believe with all my heart that God divinely connected you with your mate. It's up to you to maintain that connection. He wants you to enjoy your spouse and not be at odds with him or with her. Here are some helpful steps in staying connected with your spouse that if you work uh, on hard enough will produce a stronger, happier marriage. Step number one is work on being more patient with your mate. Be more understanding and compassionate. Show empathy. Number two is don't go to bed angry, ever. When you do, it gives the enemy a foothold on your marriage. After you calm down, talk it out and make peace. Anger grows if you don't deal with it in a timely manner. And number three is to lighten up my friends. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Don't be too serious all the time. Remember to laugh, to play, to have fun with people in your life. Proverbs 15.13 Number four, avoid touchy subjects, if at all and when possible. Things that stir up strive, like differences in doctrine or politics, how you squeeze the toothpaste or which way the toilet paper goes, should just be avoided. Some things just are not worth the strive. Number five is expect, uh, accept your spouse for who they are. That is the person you married in the first place. People have different personalities. We have different gifts and talents, but we all have different needs. And when we ought to learn what our spouse's needs are and build them up according to their needs. Many times we try to meet our spouse's needs according to what we would like and what we need, but it will not have the same effect because we are all different. Your spouse might need uh, quality time to feel loved, yet you might uh, like receiving uh, gifts. By understanding how each other uh, feels loved and what our different needs are, miscommunication will be avoided and love increased in Ephesians 4.29. <clears throat> Number six is to <clears throat> learn to forgive and let go. Sometimes we have to uh, to do this on a daily basis. Don't hold on to the offenses. Don't hold things against people. Jesus doesn't hold things against us when we sin. Ephesians 4.32 Someone I for once knew said uh, that uh, uh, they and their mother argued from the neck up. That meant that they never let anything get to their heart. They didn't hold things against each other. They dealt with the offense and moved forward, moved on, and they prayed, prayed, prayed. Number seven is to recognize strife when it starts and stop before it gets out of hand. In Proverbs 17, 14, number eight is to be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker at all costs. Decide that you are going to be a peacemaker in your marriage, in your home, in your office, and everywhere you go. It's a choice that we make. We all can choose to be peacemakers. James 3.18, Proverbs 12.20, Proverbs 16.7, Matthew 5.9, Ephesians 4.2-3 says to be completely humble and gently be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. All great marriages take work. Make it your goal to do daily remember these biblical points. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to bring to your attention whenever you're tempted to act out of love. And remember this, my friends, where there is peace, God commands a blessing. Folks, in closing, here are 12 quotes that you all might want to 
uh, to, to hear this early morning. Number one is, is that marriage is a commitment, not a feeling. Number two is I don't think that a same-sex marriage is the way God intended to be. I don't uh, uh, condone or condemn that. Number three is truth is no two people are completely compatible. We have to learn to become one. That means we may have to make sacrifices. We may have to overlook some things. We must be willing to compromise for the good of the relationship. If you start praising uh, your wife... If you start telling her how beautiful she is and how glad you are to have her in your life, when you talk about the good, you will draw out the good. If you talk about the negative in life to her or anyone, you'll draw out the negative. It's up to you to start that total change around to positivity today. You have to make a switch. Decide today, appreciating your spouse's strengths and to learn to downplay their weaknesses, not to point them out. If you do, your marriage will be filled with more peace, unity, love, and you'll see God bless your marriage in greater ways than you could even imagine. If we all do our part and take a strong stand for uh, our families, God will do his part. He'll help us to have great marriages and great relationships with our parents, children, and, of course, with God himself. Listen carefully to the words and the tone of your voice uh, uh, and, and, and the, the volume when you speak to your uh, spouse. Are you complaining all the time and telling her what she's not doing right? Or are you doing like Solomon, blessing, encouraging, and uplifting that woman or your husband? Men learn to speak blessings over your wife, and you will see that the women arise to a new level. They will respond to your praise and encouragement. Your words don't have to be poetic, fancy, or profound. Tell your wife simply but sincerely, you are a great mother to our children, and you are a great wife to me. I'm so glad I can always count on you, and I'm so glad God introduced us. At times, we're going to get angry. Anger is an emotion God built uh, into us, but we don't have to blow up and say hurtful things that are going to damage our relationship, my friends. Learn to take a setback, collect your thoughts, and think about what you have to say and what you want to say, and say it in a positive way. If a man and a woman choose to marry, two issues must be settled first. Number one, as a couple, we are committed to God. We're uh, going to uh, live a life that honors Him. We will be people of excellence and integrity and in all that we do. And the second settled issue uh, must be, as a couple, we are committed to each other and we are committed to serving God. Occasionally we may disagree, say things we shouldn't. We might even... Um, pout or get downright angry at times, but when it's all said and done, we're going to get over um, these obstacles and we will forgive and move on. Leaving is not an option. We're committed to each other through the good times and through the tough times. Those are the words. And last but not least, we keep a lot of humor and laughter in the home. A lot of times these days, people let the stress of life take the joy from our home. When you can laugh and you can have joy, that's very healthy. You know, uh, it, uh, my wife, she's very spontaneous and fun. I can hear her laughter all through the house. It sets the tone for the house. I like someone who can laugh, my friends. The second thing is to respect. We just do our best. We don't always agree. Uh, with each other, but th uh, we make the decision that we want to treat each other with respect, with love, and with uh, unity. It is important for a husband to understand that his words have tremendous power in his wife's life. He needs to bless her with words. She's given her life to love and care for you as the husband, to partner with, uh, with us, to create a family together, to nurture our children. If, uh, if, uh, if we 
uh, or he is always finding fault in something she's doing, always putting her down, he will reap horrendous problems in his marriage and his love. Moreover, many women today are depressed and feel emotionally abused because their husbands do not bless them with the words. Um, but one of the leading causes of emotional breakdowns among married women is the fact that the women do not feel valued. One of the main reasons for that deficiency is because the husbands are willfully or unwittingly withholding the words of approval women so desperately desire. If you want to see God do wonders in your marriage, start praising your spouse. Start appreciating and encouraging her. Every single day, a husband should tell his wife, I love you. I appreciate you. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me. A wife should do the same for her husband. Your relationship, my friend, would improve immensely if you would simply start speaking kind, positive words, blessing your spouse instead of cursing him or her and asking God for direction. Call me at 844 help Together we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. Remember a simple smile to anyone can help them change their day and it can even change your day remember god wants us to all have a happy relationship with someone in life use your words wisely watch your tongue and praise god and ask god to be part of your life daily take good care and we'll talk to you guys real soon see you tomorrow and remember god loves you Thank you.